We have lost, Mr. President, we have lost again these practices. Yet our call for peace are repeatedly ignored and vetted away. In other words, it is a world in which the mighty continue to silence the meek with far greater weapon than before. Nowhere does this ring truer, of course, than in Gaza. We stand at a critical juncture in world history on the failure of global governance to address the genocide of Palestinians. And it has echoed across the world on the abysmal response by world leaders to end these horrendous crimes. Yet, there are also many of us who have pursued justice for the people of Gaza. For almost one year now, we have raised our voices in protest and sought to establish a ceasefire. Again and again, our voices have been shut down in the Security Council through the, vet the power of veto. In a powerful address to the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly, Malaysia's foreign minister delivered a scathing critique of the current state of global affairs, particularly focusing on the situation in Gaza and the abuse of veto power in the Security Council. The minister's speech representing Malaysia's commitment to peace and justice highlighted the stark contrast between the UN's founding principles and the deadly realities faced by many nations today. The minister emphasized that 79 years after the UN's establishment, the world has become deadlier for many, with remote warfare and drone strikes interrupting everyday life in schools, hospitals, and humanitarian missions. He pointedly stated, We have lost against these practices, yet our calls for peace are repeatedly ignored and vetoed away. The address centered on the critical juncture in world history, particularly the failure of global governance to address the genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. The minister criticized the inadequate response of world leaders to end these atrocities and highlighted the repeated silencing of voices seeking justice through the abuse of veto power in the Security Council. This impassioned speech set the stage for a broader discussion on UN reform, the limitations of the veto power, and the urgent need for accountability in cases of crimes against humanity. The minister's words resonated with a call for change, emphasizing that the UN's willingness to reform is a matter of life and death for countless innocent people. 79 years it has been since the founding of the United Nations. From the dust, the Second World War, we emerge, many of us as new nation states, with a shared goal to build a safer world. Yet, for many of us, it is not a safer world than it was 79 years ago. For many, it has only become a deadlier world. It has become a world in which war can be waged remotely and with impunity, a world in which a drone strike can fatally interrupt a lesson at school, a surgery in a hospital, or a convoy delivery human, humanitarian aid. We have lost, Mr. President, we have lost again these practices, yet our call for peace are repeatedly ignored and vetted away. In other words, it is a world in which the mighty continue to silence the meek with far greater weapon than before. Nowhere does this ring truer, of course, than in Gaza. We stand at a critical juncture in world history on the failure of global governance to address the genocide of Palestinians. And it has echoed across the world on the abysmal response by world leaders to end these horrendous crimes. Yet, there are also many of us who have pursued justice for the people of Gaza. For almost one year now, we have raised our voices in protest and sought to establish a ceasefire. Again and again, our voices have been shut down in the Security Council through the, vet the power of veto. It is clear the mechanisms of Security Council have been abused to enable mass atrocities. Our failure to establish a ceasefire is no longer justifiable. We have run out of excuses, Mr. President. It is time to address the problem. The veto should not be exercised at will. There must be an exception in cases of crimes, crimes against humanity and attacks of civilian infrastructure. We must commit ourselves 
towards reform United Nation. Justice begins with ending impunity and ensuring accountability. For this to be realized, the undemocratic veto must be limited or abolished altogether. The humiliating paralysis of Security Council must be corrected through the empowerment of this General Assembly, where the voices of the majority prevail. Understand this, our willingness to reform is a matter of life and death of countless innocent people. They are children dying between missile strikes and between the words that we speak today. The Malaysian Foreign Minister's address at the UN General Assembly highlighted several critical issues facing the international community. He emphasized the need for UN reform, particularly in addressing the abuse of veto power in the Security Council. The minister called for limiting or abolishing the veto, especially in cases involving crimes against humanity and attacks on civilian infrastructure. The speech also focused on the ongoing crisis in Gaza, condemning Israel's actions and calling for immediate intervention. The minister accused Israel of violating international laws, including the Genocide Convention and Geneva Convention. He urged the international community to reinstitute the United Nations Special Committee Against Apartheid and demanded that the Security Council impose an immediate arms embargo against Israel. Furthermore, the address touched upon regional issues, particularly ASEAN's role in maintaining peace and stability in Southeast Asia. The minister announced Malaysia's readiness to assume the chairmanship of ASEAN in 2025, focusing on future readiness, inclusive policies, and reinforcing ASEAN's centrality amidst geopolitical rivalries. Mr. President, the theme of this General Assembly session is leaving no one behind. In the spirit of this effort, it fills us with hope to see the state of Palestine seated among us today. Malaysia lauds the 143 member states for their support in extending the UN's principle of equality among nations to the state of Palestine this year. And we strongly urge the remaining minority to join the majority. It is time to realize Palestine's right to statehood and full membership in this assembly. It is only through the elevation of dialogue and diplomacy that we can seek a long-lasting solution, not through collective punishment, not through man-made famine, and not through impunity and disregard for international law, Mr. President. Indeed, the elevation of dialogue and respect for international law have been compromised in this assembly for some time now. Israel has violated every international law there is, including the Genocide Convention, Geneva Convention, and Human Rights Treaties. Just months ago, the world witnessed Israel's mockery and utter disrespect of the United Nations in this very hall with the insolent shredding of the United Nations Charter. Israel's actions with each passing day raise our doubt as to whether it as actually believes in the UN system or values its membership in this organization. Its illegal occupation has entrenched a system of apartheid and discrimination against Palestinians. The Israel regime has itself declared its intent to wipe out an entire population. This is, Mr. President, without question, a genocide. The United Nations must, rem must not remain idle. We must urgently utilize the existing processes founded by the General Assembly, along with mechanisms developed by Human Rights Council. Malaysia calls on the international community to, to reinstitute the United Nations Special Committee against APT. In conclusion, the Malaysian Foreign Minister's address at the UN General Assembly served as a powerful call to action for the international community. He emphasized the need for urgent reforms within the United Nations, particularly in addressing the abuse of veto power and ensuring accountability for human rights violations. The minister's speech highlighted the critical situation in Gaza, urging immediate intervention and calling for an end to the occupation. He stressed the importance of upholding international law and justice, reminding the Assembly that the question of Gaza is a direct test of the UN's capability. Looking towards the future, the address emphasized the role of regional cooperation, particularly through ASEAN, in addressing global challenges.
the minister expressed Malaysia's commitment to strengthening ASEAN's position in the Asia-Pacific region and managing critical issues such as tensions in the South China Sea. As the UN approaches its 80th anniversary, the Malaysian foreign minister's speech served as a reminder of the organization's achievements and the challenges that lie ahead. He called for renewed commitment to justice and peace, urging member states to work together in addressing global issues and ensuring that the voices of all nations are heard and respected in the international arena.